Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to worship tonight, the night that we come to remember the birth of Jesus, our Savior. It's good to have you in this place. The order of service is printed in the worship book. Um, there's a several spots for you to be able to sing some familiar Christmas carols. We invite you to do that during the time for communion and during the offering. Um, we also invite you to participate in Holy Communion. This is the Lord's table, and the Lord invites all to come and share in the Holy Meal. And communion is served here by intention. You'll be ushered down the center aisle, receive the wafer, then dip it into the red wine or white grape juice, eat, and then return to your seats using the side aisles. If you need a gluten-free wafer, I'll have the gluten-free wafers on this side. So just come over to this side to commune, and let me know that you're seeking gluten-free. Um, just a couple of other things. I want to uh, remind you that when we light candles, remember, never tip a candle that is already lit. Always only tip an unlit candle into a lighted flame. As I explained at 4 o'clock, if you don't do that, hot wax will run down your body, you'll scream and yell, and we'll wonder what's going on. Okay, so we prefer you not do that. And we also don't want it on our chairs. So um, don't tip an already lit candle when that time comes. Uh, the congregation, the folks that are listed in the bulletin, have um, helped to build our Christmas trees tonight. There are 2,026 cans of vegetables and fruit in those trees. And on, our, at our Epiphany celebration on January 6th, all those vegetables and fruit will be taken down to the Lakeview Food Pantry. The other th a little project that our congregation participated in in August, in Advent, I wish it was August, um, <laughs> in Advent, was a, a reverse Advent box, and they all took a box, and each day, they, I see Nate's coming in with his right now, um, each, there you go, good job Nate, kind of heavy for you, I can tell, um, each day during Advent, they placed a food item in that box to count down to Christmas, um, instead of opening up uh, Advent calendars, so all of those boxes are what you see in the entryway, and they will also on Epiphany Celebration on January 6th, be transported down to the Lakeview Food Pantry. So we invite you to come to that service um, as well. I'm not sure that I have other announcements. I think, I think anything else you can look at and see clearly in your bulletin. I would just like to thank all those who were involved in the choir and in the drama this evening for their work and effort and energy who went very well at four o'clock, and we had a full house, and now we'll see what happens at six o'clock. Um, maybe the lights will go out. Or maybe not. Um, anyway, let's uh, silence all of our electronics, make sure we're not talking to our neighbors, and we'll prepare our hearts for worship during Lynn's prayer.
For the litany, I will read the parts marked with a P. You will read the parts marked with a C. Holy God, our beginning and ending, we give thanks to you. You have called all creation into being. You have spread out the heavens like a tent and sent a boundary to the seas. You have filled the world with your creatures and created us in your image. You have called all things good. Joseph went to the town of Nazareth in Ga Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. While they were there, the time was right for her to deliver her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Shepherds were in the fields that night, being washed over their lots. An angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly beings, praising God and saying, The angels left them, and the shepherds went to Bethlehem with haste to see what the Lord had done. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Holy God, as you visited us in the birth of Jesus, visit us now by the power of your Spirit in these elements of bread and wine, making them for us the body and blood of Christ. We remember how Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his friends, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then he took a cup of wine and blessed and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Just as Jesus' birth was for the whole world, this bread and wine is for everyone, for the hungry, for the lost, for those who search and those who are found, for those who question and for those who know peace. This is the table of our Lord who invites us to come. This is bread and wine for all. God, the great I am, blessed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and eat. The meal is ready. I would ask five servers to come forward. The congregation is invited to sing the hymns um, that are printed in your worship book as we commune this evening.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. As the ushers receive the evening offering, you're invited to sing Silent Night. The words will appear on the screen. It is December 24th, 2018. We are in Madison, Wisconsin. Strangers from the South have just arrived in our city. Yo, Joe, my back is killing me. And that Tylenol you boosted at Quick Trip is just not cutting it. Oh, well, babe, you know, I told you it was going to be a long walk, Mary. And you know, there's no light rail in this town, and we sure don't have cash for an Uber. So, we're just going to have to make do. I tell you what, I'll knock on some doors. Somebody will have a place for us to stay. Maybe there's some place in their basement, a garage or something. We'll find something. Here we go. All right, sounds like a good idea. You know, my feet are killing me. My ankles are the size of tree trunks. i got to get off my feet. you got to find us a place to I spend the you. night. I got you, I got you. Let me go knock on this door. We'll see what happens. Joseph approaches the nearest door and knocks. There is no answer, so he knocks again. And slowly and cautiously, the door opens, revealing a woman who is clearly not ready for visitors. <laughs> Yeah? What do you want? It's kind of late to be knocking on doors, don't you think? Well, yeah, it is. I'm sorry to bother you, but, but my woman here, she's going to have our kid real soon, and, and we were just hoping to find a place to crash tonight. Do you maybe have a spot in the basement or a bathroom, and maybe your garage even? What? Are you kidding? It's Christmas Eve. I have got my husband's entire incorrigible family coming over tomorrow for Christmas dinner. I have spent all day 
baking pies and running all over this town looking for a stupid tofurkey for my vegetarian brother-in-law. And now I've got to get up early in the morning to get the real turkey in the oven. You know, I'm doing this new slow roast method. It's supposed to keep the bird really nice and nice. But you know, that's not going to be good enough for my mother-in-law. Oh, no, she'll find something to complain about. The turkey's going to be too dry. There's too much celery in the stuffing. No, nothing pleases that one. And my sister-in-law is going to be totally bent out of shape that I didn't make the dinner rolls from scratch. I'd like to see her try to put together a meal like this. That's not going to happen. No, it's all on me, and I have to do it all by myself. You know, I'm not going to get any help at all from that lazy, no-good old man of mine. No, I've got too much to do. I am too busy. I'm done. i got to go. you got to go. But wait, could just the spot, maybe, could just the garage? <sighs> so, she got a spot for us, hon? Uh, not here, babe. She, something's going on. Big deal tomorrow. She's got lots of food to make. And she's got issues with her old man's family. Nah, she's got issues with her old man, too. <laughs> well, you know, I think we got the right idea. Just buck up. Get a smile on your face. You got this. Okay, got it. Okay, okay, okay. This one will do. Go for these, these folks will have room for us. They got you. They got you. It's getting late in the evening. It's getting darker outside and it's cold. Joseph approaches another home and knocks again. This time, his knocking becomes more desperate. Are you in Santa? This is Mrs. Claus. I saw Santa was supposed to be the fat one. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not Santa. Who the heck is Santa anyway? We're waiting for Santa. My brother and I are supposed to be in bed, but we can't sleep. This is the night where Santa comes and brings us presents. I asked for the new Xbox. Oh geez, I hope I get it. I don't know what I'll do if I don't get the new Xbox. We put some cookies out just to be sure. But did you ask Santa to bring you? Well, I was hoping maybe Santa, the Santa bring us a place to say, Hey, is there a parent around here I can talk to? Oh, no. Mom and Dad are in bed, and they'll kill me. They knew I was up and answering the front door. You can't talk to them now. You know, I don't know if Santa really puts those presents under the tree, or my mom does it while we're sleeping. I love Christmas. Christmas is the best time of year. We get presents, a vacation off from school, and my mom makes us treats. I gotta go. But wait, cause is your mom around? Dad, maybe? Oh. The kid looked pretty excited. Is he, is he getting us a sleeping bag or something? Yeah, he's real excited, all right. For some Santa and Christmas, and I don't know what's going on, but we sure as heck can't stay here, babe. I, I don't know what we'll do. Um, there's gotta be somebody. There's gotta be someone. Oh, I don't know who the Santa is either, but. I do know I need to lay down so you've got to find us a place to sleep. You've okay, okay, baby. Pull up your maternity pants and I'll take care of this. <laughs> Joseph is getting desperate. It appears people aren't interested in providing him and Mary with a place for the night. Too many other things seem to be a priority. But Joseph knocks on the third front door. You have to hurry up. We have to leave soon for midnight mass, or we're going to be late. And we'll end up in the balcony like last year. Now, what, what do you want this time of night? Say it, she's looking pretty brothers. Well, yeah, see, my wife, well, my girlfriend, she is pregnant. She's probably going to have a baby pretty soon. And we're just looking for a place to spend the night so I can hook up with my family tomorrow. I got family time. You know, is there any place you could stay? Maybe a spot in your basement? A, a, you saw a crawl space back there, or, or maybe your patio? Well, I can't do that. It's Christmas Eve. The music at church tonight is so wonderful. The choir sings, and there's violins, and the music director even plays the organ. And then the church is all decorated with Christmas lights, the Christmas trees with the white lights and the gold ornaments. It's just so wonderful. Midnight Mass makes you me feel good all over. Everybody's so full of joy. And so, I, I don't, it's, you know, because Jesus is the reason for the season. It's the season of giving. 
So I don't know what you're going to do, but you can't sit here. Well, can you give us a glass of water for my woman, maybe? I can't do that. I have to get my kids and husband in the car soon, or we're going to be late. Bobby, how many times do I have to tell you? Tie your shoes! Because I just can't let that ornery Mrs. Weber be in a church this year. She's going to walk down the center aisle in her new Christmas outfit, sit right in the front row, and then we're all going to have to hear how she kicked, cooks the best Christmas goose in all of Madison. I'm sorry, but I've got to go. But we're not asking for much. Please, maybe. That didn't look good. Uh, no, babe. They got no room for us either. I don't know what we're going to do here tonight. Oh, my ankles are the size of tree trunks. I'm hormonal. I just have to lay down. I have to lay down soon. Okay, okay, okay. There's got to be something to do. All right, I'll figure it out. I'll try to figure it out. I'll try to figure it out. Oh, Stay with me here in my box. What? Well, you sure, Fred? Oh yeah, come, come on over. But I, I know you need a place to stay, and I can I can help you. Well, that's this, mighty hospitable. The snow will keep the this tarp keeps the snow off, and I've even got an extra blanket and uh, and some newspapers in here somewhere for you. Well, that sounds great, but it looks kind of snug in there. We don't want to cramp your style, Fred. No, 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 don't worry. There's, there's plenty of room for everybody in here. Say, is anybody hungry? I've oh, got some crackers. Possibly. And I got some, I got some oh. peanut butter, too. Oh. Come on, come on in. Oh, Fred, you don't know what your kindness means to us tonight. It's been a hard day. <sighs> uh, say, do I feel water? <laughs> My water just broke. Oh. It's getting real now, Joe. Our son, he's breaking into the world. The son of Mary and Joseph is indeed breaking into our world tonight, right now. Jesus, the Savior of the world, breaks into our world and into our hearts. We don't have to go looking for him. He comes to us. And again, like every Christmas, this night tells us that the loving Creator wanted to enter our world and enter our individual lives. So Jesus unconditionally knocks at the door of our hearts and asks to be let in. Just like Jesus came to the manger, and to the shepherds, and to the angels, and to the magi, and to the people of Palestine in the first century, Jesus comes to us. And we only have to respond. Sadly, the innkeeper isn't the only person who wouldn't provide room for Jesus. Throughout time, we have all put up obstacles and we've locked doors so that Jesus couldn't get in. Humans, you know, are pretty good at closing the doors to our hearts and then ignoring the knock of God's divine love in Jesus. We keep ourselves so busy and our time so filled that we never get to pause enough to think about the meaning of life or the mystery of the universe or of the reality of eternity. We become so absorbed in material things like clothing and entertainment and fame and food and power and money that we ignore the fact that there is a spiritual world about us as well. We can even be so busy with our religious and church affairs that we don't take time to relate to Jesus. So tonight I invite each one of you to be that street person, that person under the tarp, the person who opened their door wide. I invite you to open your door wide. Spread out your tart. Get out your extra crackers and peanut butter. Lay down a few more newspapers. Welcome Jesus into your hearts, just like you are welcoming your family and friends into your homes this evening. Provide Jesus with the same hospitality and the same attention that you are providing <coughs> the Christmas guests at your house. A 
allow Jesus inside so that you are filled with the good news of God's gracious salvation. Allow your doors to open wide so that then Jesus can come in and push you back out into the world, out into the world to share the news of God's love through your words and through your actions. Jesus is indeed breaking into our world and into our hearts right now. And all we have to do is welcome him. Let us pray. Dear God, on a wondrous night you sent your Son to take on frail human flesh in order that those who believe in him might be saved. You sent angels to herald his birth in Bethlehem. You sent a star to proclaim it to the ends of the earth. Open our hearts right now to welcome this child. Make us messengers of this good news. Give us patience to wait in silence as we look forward to the time of your final peace. Amen.
follow this child, who is grace beyond all grace, a gift beyond all gifts, and a joy beyond all joys. Follow this child who promises to come again. Go now in peace to love and to serve this Bethlehem baby. Amen.